Jen, and it says here that you are looking for advice on how to speak about death with your son uh, because your his grandfather, I guess, will be dying soon, and that's where where family is. I'm not sure what that last part is from the call screener, um, but is that about right? Yeah, that's about right. So um, I'm an atheist. I've been an atheist actually since the day my son was baptized, which is a whole other story. But yeah. um, so essentially his his grandfather, you know, we didn't think he'd make it till Christmas and he did. Um, my son's father and I share custody. His father is a theist. His grandfather is a theist. All of my family is a theist with the exception of my husband. And so they've had several talks with him. We've sat down as a family and, and I remain quiet why, you know, during the time that his grandfather and grandmother are saying, you know, well, I'll be going to heaven, I'll be watching you. And then at night when I come, you know, we come home and I, I tuck my son in, in bed and he's like, well, mom, you know, what do you think? And I say, well, I think that everyone has a different theory on what happens. My son is nine. He's, he's okay. Okay. it's just, it's hard. I don't know if I'm saying the right thing to him. And, and that's why I was calling you guys. I, I do want to hear what, what you think, because well, I always say some people think you come back a good dog. Some I'm going to say that, go to you know, heaven. Jen having raised a son yeah. probably is a good person to answer this. Yeah. Um, yeah. My son is 13 and we first, uh, confronted the issue of death with him when he was fairly young. He was about uh, two and a half when our French bulldog died. Um, and so this was a dog that we had before he was born. So, you know, he it, from the time he was aware of pets, this dog was there. And so we had to explain to him as a two and a half year old kid this concept of death that, you know, Dana, we would take Dana to the vet and the vet would give her some medicine that would make her go to sleep and she just wouldn't wake up. And so that was his initial introduction to death. And it was very sad. We were going to miss her. But, you know, everybody dies eventually. Um, and we, we try to make it, you know, as a this is a normal part of life. And she's very old. She's very sick. And and this is w what we have to do for her. Um I think, isn't this why, I mean, some parents actually buy short-lived pets for small children in order yeah. to sort of illustrate this point. Like you, you let the child have the pet, the pet lives its right. life, the pet dies, and then you can sort of have this illustration yeah. to lean on. Like, I let's mean, get him a hamster it, it, yeah, or a and, goldfish. or and, and doing it, you know, with a pet because the children have an emotional connection with the pet. And so, you know, they do experience a sense of loss. And, and in the aftermath of this, he cried. You know, he's very sad. And then, you know, the next, I guess, round of this was when um, we had to have one of our cats euthanized. And he was about six at the time. So that really hit him hard because, um, you know, at six, he's very aware now of, of a little more of, of what death means, that they're not coming back. Um, and so that one was really tough for him. And... That was when he told us that um, he wanted to be there when we had Griffin euthanized. And so How old he, was he, did you say? He was about six years old. Okay, okay. And so... I would probably allow that. Yeah, we allowed him to do that. And wh what we discovered was that the child's imagination of what is happening in this process is probably worse than the reality. Oh. So and it so, was cathartic. Yeah, and, and, and again, you know, very sad. He was just very emotional, just <laughs> sobbing over this, which is a healthy response to losing a pet. Um, and then, you know, when, when my mother died, um, we exp he wasn't there for that um, because my mother lived in Alabama, but he was very aware that Grandma Jean was dying and that she was, you know, she was very old and yeah. she was very sick. And They will come and put her to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not. I, okay, but, I don't know if that know, was horrible humor or not. But no, we've we've tried to present death as kind of a normal part of life, and that you know when you when you come to the end of your life, however long or short that is, you just stop. Yeah. And I guess I have a question for Misty though. Are you? 
Were you asking what I, what I just suggested that Jen answer yeah. and what Jen did answer, or are you more concerned about the fact that you have actual family that has a right to talk to him about conflicting opinions about what happens for sort of like afterlife? Yeah. Like, is this about a discrepancy between you and the father of how you're explaining what happens after death, or is this really about how to address death with him? Just how to address death with him because he yeah. he knows my okay. son well both my son's father and my son know I'm an atheist okay. and so when okay. my son I see him looking at me when his grandpa's like I'll be watching you you know I'll be here every day you know I'll be in heaven I'll come down and watch you as you grow <laughs> which up. is just and creepy I, as fuck I mean I know it, it, <laughs> I'm sorry but it that really is. is and so then he that's when we go home and he goes well mom what do you believe and I yeah. say I believe everyone believes something different but I don't know if that's the answer because I really don't believe well I do believe that but I believe yeah, it's not un- you yeah Grandpa's I, I kind of like the best it. the best thing I liked about what Jen said was the concept of they don't come back right? And to me, that is the big thing. It's like you can speculate all day long about where they went or if they went somewhere or yeah. what is going on or what isn't going on or there's no more brain function or, you know, and I can go on and on and on about it. But the, the one thing I think we mostly agree on, at least, you know, the, the majority of people in general would agree that um, you're not going to see them again, right? Yeah. And, and there are some people who would be like, you'll see them when you die. But uh, grandpa is not going to be visiting, right? right? And that, I think, is the thing that as long as the kid absorbs that, um, then he really gets the important aspect of what death means, that, that you will not be seeing this person anymore like you do now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I will, I'll give that a shot. It's just, it's hard with the family members saying something so different. Well, and see, that's yeah, what I was I wondering. Like bad guy. I don't have a happy story <laughs> to tell. But it is, a, it is a happy you know. story. I mean, if you, it, I, to me, it's sort of like we all get a, a shot at life, right? Like it's wonderful to have a life and grandpa had a really good life and he's lived to see his children grow up. He's lived to see his grandchildren. He's mm-hmm. done all the things in life that, you know, many people don't get to do. Some people die when they're young. Right. And so grandpa has had a really long life, has a productive life. He has family around him at his death. And, um, and this is kind of just how things are. Things live, things die. It's a cycle on the planet, you know? And uh, I know that some people do have a, a stronger reaction to it, right? Like mm-hmm. we have entire groups of people who actually are working to extend human life and to, you know, potentially go on to immortality, whatever it is they want to do. Right. That's I, I have no problem if people want to go that route or look into that or however mm-hmm. they want to do it. Um, I'm just kind of one of those people that's like, it's fine. <laughs> <You Yeah. know? laughs> like, it's just part of the cycle. And I guess I'm so surrounded by it that it just doesn't freak me out. But um, you know, I, I would hope that people wouldn't be too freaked out uh, upon learning about their own demise, you know, impending or which, I mean, it, it always yeah. is. But when you hear about it, I guess, in a more immediate fashion, it can be a little bit more traumatic. Um, well, and I, I think it's an opportunity to emphasize to a child in particular how important it is to live your life live. the best way you can, because it is the one and only chance you get. That might be a good way to go at it, you know, like this is why life is important because Mm -hmm. we know that at the end of this, you know, the candle burns down and at the end of it, there's no more candle. So you have to, yeah, you have to make the most while you have the light. Yeah. I I do have to say I like the candle burning out more than grandpa watching (laughs) (laughs) us. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, I mean, you know, they always present the loved one as going to heaven, which is a happy story. But, you know, the the flip side of that is that there is this doctrine of hell, which is pretty damaging and scary to people. So, Well, and there's also some horrific things that come out of that heaven doctrine, like people telling people who have lost infants, you know, like, oh, they're with God. So, you know, yeah, "Yeah, oh, it was part of a plan. You'll understand. It's it's like, whoa, that's pretty, you know, it's a pretty horrific thing to tell a person. But yeah. That's where it leads sometimes. I, I think I'm gonna go that go that route and, and just you know really concentrate on the life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is what makes life precious: is the fact that it's not eternal. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. I know you're not all wanting right. to take up all your time with you. No, you're fine. This call, so I should Thank appreciate you. it. Have a happy new year. Yeah. Right. You too. Bye um, bye. Bye. No, all right. I, you know that. I actually like calls like this because I think this is something that so many people struggle with, mm-hmm. not only just 
you know, with their kids, but with themselves, kind of coming to terms with the fact that life is finite, unlike what religions present. Yeah. You know, we, we don't have any evidence that there's an afterlife, and so we have to treat this one as if it's not a dress rehearsal for whatever comes <laughs> <Right>. next. <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, I don't know if I just picked it up. Like, um, I know my mother had a very lax attitude about it, mm-hmm. you know, and even when she was dying, she was just sort of like, yeah, what are you going to do? You don't live for her. And, you know, I think... Um, with her, she kind of got weaker and weaker mm-hmm. uh, until her death. And I kind of look at it that way, that it's like, I just don't have the energy I used to have. I and I'm almost like, I wonder if it's not just sort of we wind down to sort of be more accepting at the end. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, can I just take a nap and not wake up? Because, yeah. I mean, and, and I don't mean that to sound flip to people who may actually be dealing with, like, death. You know what I mean? I know there are yeah. people out there who are just like, what the hell, I was just diagnosed with cancer and you're saying this stuff. And you're, But I'm just saying, like, that for me... Um, there is a certain there are certain parts to it where I it sounds almost flip, but I'm not really being flip, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's the same with I'll I'll read something online and I'll just be like, these types of horror stories, you know. After I'm dead, I won't have to see them anymore, you know. I don't yeah. have to see this stuff anymore. This is just you know things I don't ever want to see again, and I will have that opportunity. To, yeah, you know, I won't know it, but you know, they, there it is. 